Well, hello friends. Welcome to the lasagna making party and some baked ziti. And we're doing some healthy lasagna variations, so you'll be proud. Let's get started. In my recent 40 massive freezer meals that we did, yes, go watch the video. There's a whole story behind it. Anyway, I've been doing the whole 40 massive meals on YouTube forever, for 100 years, right? Okay, but last time I was not able to get any lasagnas done, and I really wanted to, and it's been a while. I don't know when the last time is we had lasagna. Six months, a year, I think. It was even Stouffer's lasagnas then. And I have recipes over on largefamilytable.com for doing big batch, large family style lasagna and big ziti. And I also have a big batch recipe for cabbage lasagna and a recipe for, I like using these, it's heart of palm. And these are lasagna sheets. So you can make a really good like fake you out lasagna. I, I call it better than nothing lasagna. That's just something I like to call my little extra alternative options. Same thing, the cabbage lasagna, it's fantastic. If you are a cabbage fan, you will love cabbage lasagna. We also are doing, we've got regular, uh, like I like to call it, dumb old donkey noodles, okay? And then we also have regular old baked ziti noodles. Now, I do have, and I don't know, you know I made these plans, how far will I go? How deep will this get? I really don't have that much time, okay? This video might be over 100 days, who knows? Or it could all happen in this afternoon. So by the hat, I'll let you know, I've been out much of the day. I had a class with my bonus daughter this morning. We were out doing things. Rainy day, but yet not too cold hat. The hat helps me on the rainy days. And then this evening, my kids are doing this, what do they call it? It's like a, ca a ca candy cane flashlight scavenger hunt at a local park. I got a new pack, a 10 pack of flashlights today at Walmart. Oh, I gotta show you the decorating thing that I got at Walmart. Okay, mama ran and got it. Here's the flashlight pack. It was like $10.98. I got 10 flashlights and the batteries. I thought under $11 good for one evening of fun, okay? Who knows what life those flashlights are gonna lead after tonight. And then look at this fun thing. Thank you, Walmart. They're giant lights I mean this is just fun okay it was $24 they're supposed to work even if one goes out $24 of fun in this mega mama kitchen for this Christmas season so as always I'm not sure how far we're gonna get I do know we need to eat dinner tonight and this is a case of since I'm cooking this I want us to actually have dinner too so I need to just jump in and get started yesterday I had my 19 year old set out 20 pounds of ground beef, our grass fed cow that we had bought. He sent out 20 pounds of ground beef to defrost in the refrigerator. And then today I had him, I sent, sent him a text while I was out this morning to get that cooking in the roaster oven. So that meat is done. So we're prepped as far as the meat being cooked. Now, what I wanted to give it a try, will it be the best thing in the world? Will I say, okay, don't do that again? I don't know, we're learning, we'll figure it out. I have freeze dried onions with my Harvest Right freeze dryer. We all know I have freeze dried peppers. I also have frozen peppers, but I wanted to give my freeze dried ones a try. And I have been slowly, I freeze dried a whole bushel of squash. I have been adding my squash to different recipes. It was great in egg roll on a bowl. Anyway, you can't really tell, but it gets squash in there. And I, I love squash in all its forms also. So I'm gonna sneak some extra veggies in this sauce that I'm doing. The meat, of course, has some liquid that it has produced while cooking for several hours in the roaster oven. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and put some onions and put some peppers in. I mean, I have on my recipes how much I would use if I was putting them in fresh. I'm gonna eyeball the squash. I'm gonna probably start doing a whole jar and then we'll see if I think I can get away with another jar. Now also, I don't have any ricotta, but what I do have, let's see, get over here. I have five of the Nancy's probiotic cottage cheese left and I have one of 
the full fat cottage cheese left and these are little containers though so anyway i thought i would work on using these in the recipes i also have some nancy's probiotic sour cream and i have greek yogurt now i've done lots of swaps with ricotta cheese i have swapped out cottage cheese i have swapped out sour cream i've swapped out Greek yogurt. I really don't see too much difference with any of it. I still add in the eggs and like mozzarella or whatever cheese I have. I have these sitting out, but just depending on, you know, if I ever quit gabbing and actually get to big cooking. Well, I can get to some big cooking now. Look, we're started. I'm gonna check on this meat again. While we're talking, I can work on this meat. It's, it's all done. But I wanted to go ahead and put the onions and the peppers and the squash directly in it to rehydrate in this instance and then we will drain it all. I mean, the only other alternative would be is if I put them in water to rehydrate. And these onions have continued to live a good life. I have two of these jars. And these were the onions that we had prepped for my early October freezer cooking that I finally finished in almost December because of my back injury, but go back to my most recent massive freezer cooking video and uh, See for yourself that adventure. Um, anyway, these were the onions I had prepped and then I wasn't going to get to, so we ran them through the freeze dryer. And I don't know. I'm not, I'm not looking at no recipe right now. I am just going to eyeball and school. We're gonna see what the onions and the peppers and the squash tell us, okay? And so like I said, we're gonna do some regular old dumb old donkey. Now, you know where I get that saying from is from Brian Regan comedy. He talks about, there's a comedy skit he does about show horses or then just dumb old donkeys in the horse trailer. So you can look that up if you want, but that's, it's infiltrated my vocabulary after over all these years of listening to Brian Regan. Let me just turn this into a Brian Regan fan video. We have seen him live. Let me know if you have seen Brian Regan live. I guess he's our family favorite comedian. Okay, can you see in there? You can. So anyway, just give it a stir, okay? I know when I added the squash to my egg roll in a bowl, I just added it to the meat and such that was cooking. And since I was gone earlier when I had my 19 year old get this cooking, so I wasn't gonna be here to eyeball this or anything, and I didn't know when I'd be back, I went ahead, I told him to put a little beef broth in here because I, I knew I would be putting vegetables in to help soak up the liquid. I didn't think it would hurt. We wouldn't have a, a mama eye here keeping an eye on the meat just to make sure nothing burned or anything. I don't know if that was necessary or not, but that's the truth of my mega mama cooking. It seemed like the thing at the time to tell them. I still have some chunks of meat here. I could push this over closer to me, but yet I'm leaning. I need to get water boiling for these noodles. Anyway, we don't have to, um, you know, cook them until they're super soft, so. But we do need to get that water going. Okay, I'm gonna go for some more. I'm just gonna, okay, okay. With the whole cow that we purchased. Can you get off of there? There we go. In times past, in purchasing a whole cow, when I purchased a half a cow, I think it was last spring at some point. It's winter now. Yeah, I think so, because it was about six months or so. Anyway, when I purchased a half a cow, and other times when I purchased a whole cow, the meat comes in one pound packages. And this time they gave me the option to have the meat done in five pound packages which I thought was very nice. And we're just now starting to get into it. Used up the last of all my other ground beef. Okay, this is gonna take some focus stirring. Um, so anyway, that's where, again, we'll see how far I can get so we can actually eat and get to our activity tonight. Will I get the healthy variations done? I don't know. Like all big batch mega mama cooking, to find out as we go sometimes. Okay. I think, oh, I'm getting that, the, on, the onion scent there. That's good. Good job. I'm so used to sauteing vegetables 
and adding them in with the meat. But we can do new things. So anyway, back to the hat. The hat is an all day commitment when I wear one and today being out and then with the rain and then I'm going out here in like two hours again. If I take the hat off friends, this is what it looks like. So I'm committed, okay, I'm committed. Just for my viewers, oh, except I got my little tag. Okay, there we go. Okay, now we're good, now we're good. We're not going there with the hair, okay. Hat commitment is an all day commitment. And maybe, maybe baby, I should have drained my meat first before adding in the vegetables, but I, I don't know. I was thinking that the vegetables would soak up some of that liquid. The lovely thing is, you know, these choppers used to be rare. I had a YouTube viewer six or seven years ago send this to me, I believe, but now I think they're even at the dollar twenty-five store. Okay. I'm gonna go for it and add the other thing of squash because I think I can get away with it. And I like seeing things go to good use. I did have a lovely viewer send me these cloths. Forgot to show you, this is how, this is how things are looking. So that was a lot of vegetables we jammed in there. So I'm gonna just let it continue to simmer there. And I have several of these, let's see, these might be from Costco. I did have a bunch I had got, I say a bunch, when was it? I bought a handful at Sharp Shopper. Maybe this tomato paste was from there. I'm looking, that's dated 2023, 20, okay. Anyway, these, I guess, were from my Costco stash. I don't think these were the ones I got. I got some marinara sauce and some other ones. I think I've used those, my Sharp Shopper ones. Um, and these have been in my pantry awaiting their day, and today is their destiny. I finally figured out, too, it was so confusing to me. I had a viewer on Facebook just really arguing with me that this was not a 30 quart pot. And I was trying to prove that this is a 30 quart pot, but you know what I think it is? I think it's the fact that the stove is so big that, was it my 30 quart she was? Or was it my 60 quart? No, she was arguing with me that my 60 quart, which is the one I did the corn in, even bigger, wasn't a 60 quart. I'm like, it, it, I promise you, this is a 60 quart. Anyway, I think it's because the stove is a mega mama stove and they just couldn't get the perspective. Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. I mean, the things I, I think through, right? Whoever thought I would have to defend the, the honor of my 60 quart pot, but it happened. And so now I'm just taking my jars that are empty from our freeze-dried peppers and onions. I'm just putting them back in my little cabinet for right now. I will rinse those out and such, but I'm not adding them to my sink on this evening. 
they're fine. Mama will rinse them on another day. It's okay. And now we are going to work on, oh, just so many components of this lasagna, but I think we're holding it together. I'm going to check my meat again. And pretty soon here, we're going to start making our homemade sauce. So I have my wind tunnel fan on, so we'll test this, haha. -ha. But I've got six boxes of lasagna. These are 16 ounce boxes. And then I've got eight boxes, eight 16 ounce boxes of the ziti. Now I should be doing way more math on this than what I'm actually doing. <laughs> so now I'm, I was trying to not get my whole recipe math brain out in too much of the recipe matrix. I just wanted to cook a lot and make a lot. Why can't I just do that? But I'm looking back, I hadn't looked at this one in a while, for my lasagna freezer meal recipe, large family style, and it makes four to five nine by 13 pans. It calls for two 16 ounce boxes of lasagna noodles. So if I got four to five from two 16 ounce boxes, I don't think I wanna cook six 16 ounce boxes. So I might back that up a bit. For my baked ziti, I use four 16 ounce boxes. And this made, I'm sure, four to five more pans. Yeah, it made four to five nine by 13 baking pans with the four boxes. And I was doing eight. Do I have to cut this back a little? Is it still Mega Mama if I only make five pans of lasagna, five pans of baked ziti, five pans of the cabbage lasagna, and then however many pans of the hearts of palm? I think it is. Okay, but I still just had so many boxes of lasagna noodles. I will think on these things a moment. So this is fun. Loosey Goosey playing in here continues. It'll all work out, right? I just realized, oh wait a minute, I only have two to three glass baking dishes available and I used all my disposable pans. So I'm in the middle of making, let's call it 20 massive lasagnas. I need pans. So I have one family member that's out right now and I'm waiting to hear back to see if they can grab me a bunch of disposable baking pans or if not, I have another one. <laughs> Kids who can drive, yay. I have another one that I will send to Walmart. It's just part of living with me. And so now we're going to work on this cabbage. I have several heads of cabbage that need used. And let me tell you, like if you want to try one of my all-time favorite, Jamarelle, what is one of your favorite recipes? It's this cabbage lasagna. I absolutely love this cabbage lasagna. I do it as a freezer meal and I will cook up a pan and I will just eat it myself for my own lunches for two or three days. I mean, no shame in this mama game. I do have a few family members, maybe two or three, who will also eat it with me, but I don't need to make enough for, you know, 11. They can have other kinds of lasagna. Anyway, you know me, I like choices, and I give my family all kinds of choices, but this is just, I, I do this cabbage lasagna for myself <laughs> because it is that good. So all I do is I peel the noodles down the best I can. Um, once I get towards the end there, I just use my knife and cut out the core and everything works out just the same. What you need is just layers of cabbage as if they were lasagna noodles. And so I'm peeling it down there, does not have to be perfect, does not have to be full leaves. And I will then rinse everything off and then I get it in a pot to cook down. No, I don't let it cook so long so it gets you know super mushy. These are my technical terms. Uh, but I do let it cook down a little bit and go from there in making my lasagna. But I just try to use, you know, every little bit of the cabbage that I can. And of course, uh, my pigs, they will not mind eating the cores there either, and the chickens, they all peck away at it.
And so I use two heads of cabbage for this lasagna and it makes me four super delicious, cannot express how super delicious pans of this cabbage lasagna. Again, it's freezer friendly. I can have one on this night and have others in the freezer ready to go. So please try it. I'm over here on my wonderful Mega Mama stove. I am getting another pot going with some water. We are not going to overflow this one. I have been getting my 30 quart pot ready with water and I am doing my regular old great value lasagna noodles in that one. Okay, so now I am doing my baked ziti in my other pot. Well, I'm doing my ziti noodles, and we are going to make baked ziti, and we're going to be happy about it. So I'm getting those noodles going in this pot. So again, multitasking mama. I am talking to them and visiting, and we are chatting. And I'm filming these noodles for you and rinsing them off. just drained the ziti noodles and I am also running cool water over those and I'm going to drain them and get them in another Mega Mama 30 quart mixing bowl. Those bowls are so helpful for all of this big batch cooking for sure. The cold water just helps the noodles stop cooking and again these work great in freezer meals. I've done baked ziti like this in various forms. I also have a chicken baked ziti I'll do. Uh, but again, I'm just sticking with the homemade meat sauce for these baked CDs. And uh, you'll see, you'll see, we'll be putting them all together here shortly. Alrighty, so now we are going to make our filling. I'm going to use this in the baked CD and in all of these lasagna variations. So I had several tubs of the Nancy's Probiotic Cottage Cheese, both the low fat and the full fat. None of that really matters. I'm just telling you what I had to work with. I like to buy cases of this cottage cheese from Azure Standard, and I had these various ones left, and I thought, that's perfect. I can make lasagna and bake ziti with you. I also have some of the Nancy's Probiotic Sour Cream on standby also. And so all I do is dump in this cottage cheese. Like I was just mentioning to you, the sour cream is my backup. I have also used sour cream in place of cottage cheese, in place of ricotta, uh, also Greek yogurt. All of these items I have used as my homemade cheese fillings in various recipes and in many freezer meals. And I've had no issues in reheating them. Whenever I cook the meals later, it's all it's all wonderful. So you can use what you have at home. If you have ricotta, use it. If you have cottage cheese, use it. If you have sour cream, use it. Um, I'm trying to think, what was my other cheese option I gave? Did I say Greek yogurt? I'm getting lost. I've, I've named four of them. <laughs> use any of these four when you are making your own lasagna and baked ziti, when you're having your own lasagna party. But I had my sour cream stand and ready, and I do go ahead and mix some in with my cottage cheese because I knew, I knew we were making mega. We will have the total number of everything we made at the end of this video. I know it's a lot. 
And so I'm dumping in my various items here. We're also going to use a bunch of eggs and some shredded cheese. And again, in doing this lasagna party, I'm just using what I have on hand. And oh my goodness, egg prices, hello. Uh, cannot wait <laughs> for my chickens to really start picking up their egg laying again in January. So I filmed this video, of course, a few weeks ago, and my local Walmarts don't even have these boxes of the 60 eggs anymore. Just recently, I bought, it was the pack of, I believe it was, is it 32 or 36 eggs? It's the two cartons of 18. It was like almost $15 what in the world what universe who could know it but here we are and so okay for a few weeks and i again i know lots of folks you see online do the water glassing or even the egg freeze drying i still have yet to get to a point in life where i actually have extra to do that uh, but this year i might get a few more hen maybe a dozen more hens started just for extra eggs could that be a thing? Like, they'll just be my extra egg hens so I can do some egg food preservation for winter uh, and actually have some. Because, you know, with chickens, my family, we just willy-nilly use a lot of eggs all the time in cooking and for breakfast and all the things. And so if we need extra for winter, then um, I think I might actually have to get a few more chickens going, which I was going to do anyway. But a little bit more on purpose. Okay, and you can see I added onion powder, garlic powder, bunch of salt and pepper in there also, and I'm just getting one of my mixers going. This is in one of my Rubbermaid storage containers, and we are just going to mix this all up, and I was hoping I was making enough for all the lasagnas and baked CD that I'm doing, and so just keep watching, and we'll see how it all works out. And so now we are going to work on actually pulling this sauce together. These are several of my big cans that I had in my grocery store in my basement, my big cans of just plain tomato sauce. I, have for years, have gotten this sauce in bulk from Costco, but I did have a time last year where Sharp Shopper had these same cans plus some same brand marinara cans that I've also been working through. I believe I'm through all of those. And this was just some of my Costco stash. Now I am so hopeful. It is on my list. We are going to do a bunch of massive food preservation, large family style, all the words we can use, homemade tomato sauce coming up this winter. I have 380 pounds. That's just me smiling and chuckling with some family there. If you're wondering, who's Jamrell smiling at? Anyway, we have 300, about 380 pounds of tomatoes frozen. And I'm hoping that we'll get into those in January. And we'll just see how far we're get, we will get. It's not going to be enough for a year's supply of tomato sauce. But it's still going to be the most homemade tomato sauce I have ever made. And we will still definitely use it. And we will go from there, right? Things can only get better from here. And so here I am just dumping in. I'm eyeballing garlic powder, onion powder, some Italian seasoning, and some salt and pepper. And I am mixing it up. 
And now I do also have the 20 pounds of ground beef that we did in the roaster oven, along with the freeze dried peppers and the freeze dried onions and those. Oh, and, and we snuck that squash in there, didn't we? No one ever knew, but we know it's in there. It's still added nutrients and it's still food that we did some massive food preservation for in advance. And this ground beef that we're going to use is from the whole cow that we purchased recently that we are working through and don't mind me i'm just checking my dishwashers yes got my slotted spoon there and that's as far as i'm going with draining my meat and stretching my neck um, with the grass-fed as i joke pure and holy ground beef that's usually not as greasy as like, you know, the 80-20 or the 70-30. And so, uh, per, I'm sorry, percentage of ground beef that you can get like at Walmart. And so I can just hold it there for a few seconds and let some of the little bit of grease drip out. And that is just fine for making our homemade sauce here. But like I say, in the future, maybe we will use our own homemade garlic powder homemade onion powder, tomatoes we have processed, and maybe even from a cow that we have raised. We shall see. But this cow is from JNL Green Farm, which is the local, homegrown, all the good things, organic farm that we buy our whole cow and whole hogs from. I've even bought a bundle of chickens from them in the past before I raised my own meat birds. Um, but I get all of my farm fresh meat from them and there you go little kiddos we got kids running through the kitchen but again i do have other family in there who are watching my little fellas while i'm focusing on my cooking here but you can see that's not really a lot of grease left in that roaster for 20 pounds of meat so i'm happy with that now i'm going to yep so we got the dishes done yay but now i just have to find all my utensils this is definitely a fantastic kitchen for all of these big projects. Like you know though, for years we did big projects and much smaller kitchens, but I'm definitely thankful now to have, it's the, the space for the projects, but also the space for family. Since I do these big cooking projects, many times in the past, like in the baby kitchen, just no one could be out there with me while I was doing these big projects. So now it's nice because I think I have 12 to 13 up to 13 other people in this kitchen on the other side of the island and I'm able to still cook and they're able to still visit and chat and do things and we just have some elbow room it's nice I appreciate that so I'm getting a few more seasonings those are some Aldi seasonings I have um, and again it's more onion powder and garlic powder we did um, oh and that's some um, yeah that's Italian seasoning there now we did our first official garlic beds and our first onion beds. I was not able to actually plant them, but my 11 year old and 13 year old, when I was healing from my back sprain, they did two big garlic beds for me. And then they did two big onions for me. I believe it is the Egyptian walking onions. I think I mentioned their names in another video. And then, um, I'm going to say traditional garlic. I know there's a name for it. And then also the elephant garlic, which a friend of mine, um, just for local preservation, she wasn't too keen on the elephant garlic, but I believe that our good friend Becky from Acre Homestead has grown some of that in the past and has used it to make garlic powder. So we will give that a shot and see how it goes. But those beds are out there and covered and doing their thing while we are here waiting for a possible ice storm in Virginia. So good job onions, good job garlic. And I have my pigs now out in, if you all remember back, let me give you a garden update while we're here <laughs> making this lasagna. I'm getting some different cheese ready. But if you remember where my 2020 garden is, that is, uh, Sorry, I distracted myself because I watched myself pick a hair off my mouth. Good job, Mama. <laughs> yeah, things happen. Anyway, uh, where my 2020 garden is, I have had different animals run through that area. It's so much shade, so much just hard, dry dirt in that area. 
I think raised beds would probably be okay and it's had two or three summers now of you know me rotating ducks and chickens and we've had pigs out there um, since last May and I have a new area in the woods where I'm going to move my pigs and I'm thinking that I'm going to do that whole area potentially into a massive tomato garden now that I see just how many large family tomatoes I need in life uh, by the way we are here mixing up our baked ziti with our meat sauce and our cheese sauce and our shredded cheese um, by the way I need to have I still need at least two big trees removed though just for sunshine wise I fight the shade if I can get those trees removed, I think that'll be a great tomato garden. So that's my hopes and dreams at the moment for my uh, tomato sauce empire, right? And so I am just eyeballing this baked CD. So I am here chatting away to my company and stirring up my baked ziti. And I'm just doing, you know, a spoonful or two at a time of the cheese sauce. Spoonful of or two at the time. And so, again, a little bit at a time, inching it forward. I believe I did eight 16-ounce packages of the ziti. And we are going to get several pans. And there we go. I am also, I had a couple jars of just regular pasta sauce. And I asked my kiddos, go see if you can find, I think I have a few more glass jars. Let's use that up also. So, again, this is us using what we have on hand. And I just dump one of those in there too. But you can tell by the noodles, they still don't look super saucy, but I'm trying to stretch out our 20 pounds of ground beef. And I think, so those are like what, 106 ounce cans of tomato sauce. And I think I used four or five of those. So yeah, lots, mega lots, right? And I'm going to use some of these glass dishes and I'm getting baked ziti going in the oven for dinner on this night because you know when mama does all the cooking it's nice to actually have dinner too <laughs> so I'm just going to fill some scoops in my glass pans we will of course top these with some shredded cheese and it was such a delicious dinner I don't think I had any left so not complaining about that for sure and so here I am. I do about two handfuls, which we always joke, you know, it's about a, a cup of cheese. A handful is a cup of cheese in my world. And so I do that on top of both the baked seedies and I get those in the oven for dinner on this night. Move out. I've been keeping my big cast iron in my oven when I'm not using it. And when I do noodle dishes, I like to cook them most of the way with some foil on top. And then I just eyeball them the last 10 to 15 minutes. I will, re will remove the foil. Same thing when I do uh, freezer meals that have noodles. Foil is our friend. And so some dishes I will tent the foil. Some dishes I'll, I maybe I'll remove it, uh, you know, about halfway. I just have to look and see how the noodles are cooking up. But with the baked ziti, I, I bake them most of the time with the foil on top. And then I remove the foil for the last 15 minutes or so. Cut them at 43.15. And here I am now. I am filling my metal baking pans with as many extra baked CDs for the freezer that we can get. And we are just adding to the dishes that are being stacked behind us there. And so I'm just scraping my baked ziti into my pans there and I'm able to get four 9 by 13 pans of baked ziti for, for the freezer. And now what I might do, just as an example on how I would use these meals in my real life, is I would most likely get a pan of baked ziti and a pan of lasagna and then maybe even like a cabbage lasagna or one of those other ones that I actually prefer. Uh, and would give my family two to three like pasta type dishes for a dinner and depending on the day if we have you know evening activities other appointments what what is life giving us on that day what are we managing we might have another vegetable side item you know i always throw out uh th throw out on the table <laughs> throw out on the the buffet uh the fruits or vegetables we have and potentially like some french garlic bread i will just add i won't add those bananas with it but oh look here you know what i'm showing you here I'm getting down on my foil. 
we finally did it. We finally ran out of our big foil, but I was telling you about dinner. Um, so I would just do like a variety of dishes for dinner and then everybody can just have a scoop or two of whatever it is they like. And so here I'm doing my lasagna that I did the meat sauce on the bottom. And now these are the cold rinse noodles on the top. I don't cook my noodles so they're you know all the way beyond fully cooked and mushy uh, there still is some firmness to them but I've never done it where you know how you can put like the hard uncooked noodles in the pasta dishes and then when you bake them the sauce cooks the noodles I've never done a freezer meal using noodles in that way you can let me know if you have or not. I always cook my noodles to a point and then use them in my freezer meals and it turns out fantastic. So on top of my noodles there, I did our cheese sauce and then I did some shredded cheese. And now I'm doing another layer of the cold noodles on top. This will just be the topping here. A little bit of the meat sauce and then I will do a little bit of the cheese sauce and top it with shredded cheese. So we got a couple layers in there. Set up my little assembly line. had a lot going on the last couple hours. The kitchen has been a loud place. I did figure it out that I was totally wrong about the candy cane flashlight hunt in the park tonight. That's actually next weekend. So I've been able to keep on rolling. I did have to send someone to the store for more pans and then I ran out of cheese. So Travis just went to Walmart and got some more cheese. So we can keep on going. That's the diesel truck in the background. We just finished, how many was that? We finished five lasagnas and four baked ziti's that have gone down to the freezer. I'm doing more lasagnas now and two other baked ziti's are in the oven for dinner tonight. So things are happening. And I had turned the water off on the cabbage a little bit ago thinking that cabbage is good and done. It's when I thought we were rushing out the door to go to the flashlight thing. It all makes sense. Anyway, cabbage isn't done. I just turned it back on. So, working on that too. Okay, we're back. Except I need to put my meat sauce down first sometimes. Hey, Amelia, those two bags of cheese over there can go in the downstairs refrigerator. Okay. Good deal. I'm continuing to make more, but I'll tell you whenever we get more going. I love you. And dinner, like 10 minutes, and we'll have hot food ready to eat. Mozzarella, yay. 
life upgrade. We unlocked the mozzarella level. So if you're wondering what all that banging was and the jingle bells, we have bells on our door and kids were bringing stuff in and yeah, the door just kept open, close, open, close, open, close. I also was having Zion wrap so many of these freezer meals for me on this night to help help get through the lasagna making party and get so many lasagnas <laughs> for the, the near future and the distant future in our freezer. And like I say, actually feed my family dinner on this night. Again, I will give you the total number, but we are doing it. I'm just keeping the lasagna train a-going. And here we go friends, so many lasagnas. And there's the baked ziti that we were having for dinner on that night. There's our empty bowl of our cheese sauce. We finished all of that homemade pasta sauce. There are the Christmas lights that we hung, $24 good from Walmart, that was fun. And so I get a lot of questions about how I wash these 30 quart bowls. And so here you see it in action. I just hold them at an angle in my big sink here and I spray it down. I will add some Dawn dish soap to it and I might let them soak a few minutes and that's how I do it. I just kind of run it through my sink there. Here's the wrapped meals. Alrighty, so here are six more lasagnas and I think, what does the video footage say? I think we put five more down in the freezer. So that's 11 regular old lasagnas. And then four big ZDs went in the freezer, plus two more just came out of the oven that I showed you. What's my math? We can do this. So 11 lasagnas, six big ZDs, tired mom brain, that 17 <laughs> noodle products. I'm laughing at myself. Okay, we shall continue. And so now I am just taking my soapy dishcloth and I am wiping all the evidence of the first part. Oh, hold on, we're not done. There's more lasagna making party activities are coming. But I am wiping all the evidence off of these countertops that have been so good to us. We even had an accident in the last few weeks where someone accidentally got black permanent marker on this countertop and I put some of that Dawn um, that power wash spray on it. We soaked it for a few minutes and it came right off. So that was good. And I'm just putting, that's part of my little mixer apparatus there in the drawer. And I am just, yes, I'm rubbing meat and cheese around, but that's okay. We're getting the first layer off. Getting it first layer off good. <laughs> and so my bowls are soaking. We got other dishes happening, other dishes being loaded. Got another big kid processing dishes on this evening. Well, friends, would you believe it? You would believe it, yes. It's been several days since the first half of our lasagna making video party. And we are gonna just continue this party once I find my beers. We are going to make our two healthy lasagnas. We're gonna make the palmini lasagna and also the cabbage lasagna. And you can, they can be accommodated either way. My beaters were in the wrong drawer. Okay, we're good, we're good, we're doing it. 
I also have a little window of time, but today during the school day, got some more sauce made, went ahead while we did our read alouds, had the cabbages going on the stove, so as much as prepped as possible. So now this afternoon, in a small little window of time, we're gonna work on assembling these things. I'm going to find, I'm going to plug this into an outlet. So we have some more probiotic cottage cheese. I've got a low fat one and four full fat ones. Those are what we're going to mix up. Get these mixed up. Gonna throw some eggs and some cheese in with it. Now, my chickens, I haven't gotten any eggs recently from my chickens or my ducks, but I do have a sampling of eggs from them that are left, and then I have one store-bought egg that was also upstairs. So we might use some duck eggs, that's cool. I am going to tap, you know, crack each egg and check it for a good egg or a bad egg before I crack it directly into my cottage cheese. Now, with store-bought eggs, I never worry about that, and I will say, in the past year, I did get a bad store-bought egg, and I was so sad, <laughs> so sad when that happens. Uh, the egg probably had like a little crack in it to allow bacteria in, all of that. With farm fresh eggs, because we have a rooster, you know, we usually pull our eggs every day, but I check more in case there was a little baby chick growing and then it got put in the refrigerator and it's not the kind of egg I want to use. So, let's see what we can, let's see what we find out here. Good, okay, okay. Pass the test, pass the test, yay. My, my duck eggs, I don't know. And they've been in the refrigerator a couple weeks. And you know, eggs, even eggs from the store have been in refrigeration for a long period of time. Duck egg is very nice, and look, we can, I don't know if you can see in there. Can you see that if I turn it? Maybe the difference, how much bigger the yolk is. Okay, anyway doing egg science with Jay Morrell. But, and again, when we're pulling them consistently every day, I don't worry too much about this, but things, I'm just not sure. I'm just not sure at all. These eggs are looking good. Good, and usually I can tell, I can see that the clear part is a little cloudy and then I just, I know. And that might be, you know, for a true rotten egg, all of these are fine. And a true rotten egg from a farmyard could be like if they were out and they laid their eggs out while they were, it, I call it a free range area. They do have a protective fence. They've got two fenced areas. You don't need to hear my whole chicken history right now. I'll let you be on that, but anyway. There will be times when chickens are out during the day and they're like, I'm not laying in no stinking coop. I'm just gonna lay me right here a nest. Sometimes they will hide a nest and you'll have a couple hens laying there for a couple days. Another big difference with the duck shells is they are they're much thicker. Waterfowl, right? And we also like for them to have times where they brood and they hatch their own babies. Good, so all the duck eggs are perfect. Now that I'm, I'm taking the time to do this and show it to you, we'll see most of the eggs should be fine. How many do I even have? Let's see, two, four, six, eight, 10, 11. I guess I'll do one more. I guess I'll do the store-bought one because mm -hmm. it had a little crack on the bottom. Okay. Okay, so that's 12. We'll stop there. I'll save these last five. Both the Palmini, see the Palmini is gluten-free, vegan, obviously gluten-free, sugar-free. You can adapt this. If you're keeping it gluten-free, you can make sure you have true gluten-free cheeses. You know, because some of these shredded cheeses, they I have heard that they uh, might dust with flour. You know, you just hear things, right? So you make sure that your gluten-free cheese is how you need it to be. If you're looking for dairy-free, there's dairy-free adaptations you can do. All of these cottage cheeses are also gluten-free. And they, they say it, it's, it's stated on here. It's not just me saying, oh, it's cottage cheese, it'll be gluten-free. No, we know how they gluten all the things. We had a good homeschool day today and I had lots of cute little fellas doing lots of painting. We've been reading about Saul, Samuel, anointing Saul as king of Israel. 
we had read through the story of David and his life, and then we saw the David play at Sight and Sound Theater. We're going to be going back here shortly to see the Christmas play as well. And I'm just telling y'all our field trips. And we have an upcoming field trip with our homeschool group to one of the local university's planetariums for a Star of Christmas show. But anyway, we read about David, and within David, we were reading about Samuel. And then we got talking about Eli, and several of the kids, hold on, I just need a little knife for this. Several of the kids had not heard, we had not shared with them about Eli and his sons. So we went back to the book of 1 Samuel, and started back with Hannah praying for her baby, getting baby Samuel, her dedicating him, him going to the temple. Anyway, this is our Bible lesson for the day, right? So we are now reading back through. And we're to the point where Samuel has anointed Saul. Saul is the king. We are also reading through Farmer Boy. And we did our math did our handwriting, did our reading. Anyway, and lots of Christmas. So those lasagnas and the baked ziti that we did in the first big part of this video, I actually have two of those lasagnas in the oven for tonight. I've just, how life and filming and stuff goes, I've tried for several days to film these recipes, so I was not basing dinner tonight. I wasn't holding my breath and saying, oh, don't worry, you'll get those done, because today's Wednesday, and I've been saying I would get them done since Sunday. <laughs> so if I put some other lasagnas already made in the oven, that helps guarantee that I will get this done. And it shall be victorious. I'm just was eyeballing this. I will have the recipes linked below. I have a long time recipe for cabbage lasagna. I'm pretty sure I published the one for the palmini lasagna over there too. Alrighty, so here is our setup. This is our cottage cheese and eggs and cheese. There's a happy child in the background. This is the meat sauce that was agreeable. I did five more pounds of the grass fed ground beef in that. And then these are the cabbage leaves. And then with these palmini, we need to open these up and rinse them off. Cabbage leaves, and I have froze this. Sorry, mama, I'm watching kids through the window. I have froze this, defrosted it, baked it, it's phenomenal. Anytime you recook something, then you're cooking with, you know, squash or I'm gonna say lasagna or cabbage or whatever, you could very well get some extra water on the corners of your meal when it's defrosted or after it bakes. And all I do is I just, I just drain that off in the sink a little bit. It's not a, doesn't deter me. I do think I will put this cabbage lasagna in my oven as well. I will cook this up because it is all working out. Yeah. So then that'll be three lasagnas. That means we we may. It's like the odds be in our favor. We will have a little bit of leftovers, I think. I think that's always the with you know wide range of ages and growth spurts and stages you just it's hard for a mama to know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And now we'll do another layer. I have some, if you see me keep looking besides kids, I got Travis out there, I've got someone coming for an appointment. <coughs> so I also keep turning my head looking at that. Okay. Can you see me in here? All right, so we got meat sauce.
And so on this day, I was waiting for my physical therapist to come to my house. And she actually comes in the middle of me doing these cabbage lasagnas. And so that's something else that's going on off camera. But she knows how I roll already. And so she's setting up her nice physical therapist table and getting her laptop and everything ready. And I am just working through getting these cabbage lasagnas done. And then after she goes, yeah, and I'm, I'm doing all kinds of things there, aren't I? After she goes, um, then I work on the heart of palm lasagnas too. But this is truly an example of uh, Mega Mama here fitting in little projects into the little crevices of my day to wrap up this lasagna making party for us. And you see with these lasagna noodles, they're not perfectly flat, you know, uh, sorry, cabbage leaf noodles. I just get the pieces of cabbage in there and I make myself a layer. I boss it around. I show it who's boss. It makes, again, this, this is just absolutely one of my favorite recipes. It's so simple. It is so delicious. And I am the boss of it. And I love it. And I eat it. And I like it. So go ahead and be sure to tell us in the comments below. Talk to us, good friends over here. Let us know your favorite lasagna variations. We all know traditional lasagna, but do you have a favorite way? I mean, I'm showing you how I like to do it with cabbage and the heart of palms. Uh, let me know other options, other fun, creative ways you have done it for yourself because we would like to try it over here. So this is our very last cabbage lasagna. We did it. We used those two heads of cabbages. We still have, yay, we still have some sauce left to do our heart of palm lasagnas. And those are going down next. Okay, so I got four of the cabbage lasagnas. I don't know how far I'm going to get with the palmini lasagna because my sauce, I have like a quarter of the sauce left. And we use five pounds of ground beef and two of the, what is it, 110 ounce, 120 ounce can, big cans of sauce and then all the seasonings. I do still have plenty of our cottage cheese left, but we're just gonna go for it. I might only get two of this and I wanted to get four, but you know, don't always get what you want, so it'll all work out. And so for these palmini lasagnas, again, it's just like traditional lasagna. It's the meat sauce. It's the rinsed off palmini sheets. And you see, they're just perfect little, little rectangles there for us. And then I do more meat sauce and I do the cheese sauce and the shredded cheese. And I just go several times with my layers, but this is another delicious dish.
are down to the last of the sauce, but we are doing it. We are getting these last few lasagnas with it. Alrighty, so we got three pans of lasagnas going down. This is the traditional lasagna. And then this is the cabbage lasagna. This one we already started dipping out. And when I was scooping out that piece of cabbage lasagna, I did have a noodle kind of hang and stick, but I don't care. It's so good. It's delicious. Get it in my face. It's okay. It all cooks up just the same. And again, did I tell you this is one of my favorite recipes? Alrighty, here's the cabbage lasagnas. That one I flipped around, which you can do with traditional lasagna too, and end up with your noodles all scrambled up, but yay dinner. Well friends, thanks for coming to my lasagna making party over the last few days. What were those numbers? I think we got, was it seven traditional lasagnas, six baked zitis, then today, what did we get? Four cabbage lasagnas and two lasagnas. Lasagnas, lasagnas, yeah. And then two palmini lasagnas. Whatever that number is, I'll have it in the link in the description below. I'm gonna feed all my people this lasagna tonight. Get us to church this evening and I'll see you real soon with another brand new video. Also, all the different lasagna recipes and the baked CD will be linked down below too. Bye-bye.